Today is the first Sunday of Advent, Cycle A. In a Christian context, Advent refers to the period of four weeks of preparation for the Feast of the Incarnation, the coming of Christ as a man. The coming of Christ has three dimensions. The historical monumental event in history when God assumed a human body, the Word became flesh and put his tent among us. The coming of Christ to us daily, especially in the Eucharist. And thirdly, the second coming of Christ, which will also be a day of judgment. They are all connected because they form part of the plan of God for our salvation. The incarnation would lead to Christ's sacrifice on the cross, which reconciled us to God. The institution of the church and its sacraments, with the help of the Holy Spirit, help us on our daily conversion. At his second coming, Christ will unite both the living and the dead to himself. When Bartimaeus, the blind man, heard that Jesus of Nazareth was passing by, he did not shout, Jesus of Nazareth, have pity on me. Instead, he said, Son of David, have pity on me. The son of David was a messianic term. Jeremiah and other prophets writing hundreds of years before the birth of Jesus had foretold that the Messiah would be a descendant of David. God is always faithful to his promises. He promised that through Abraham, all nations would be blessed. Jesus was that promise of a blessing to all nations. And he came 2,000 years later. In the first reading, Jeremiah says, The days are coming, said the Lord, when I will fulfill the promise I made to the house of Israel and Judah. In those days, in that time, I will raise up for David, a just shoot. <clears throat> 500 years went by before the birth of Jesus and those prophecies. It is foolish to doubt the second coming of Christ and to be unprepared because so much time has elapsed since Jesus' resurrection. To keep our fossil focus on being prepared as we wait for the second coming of Christ, we have to follow the advice of St. Paul to increase and abound in love for one another and for all, to strengthen our hearts, to be blameless in holiness before God and the Father at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ with all his holy ones. Amen. As we prepare for the coming of Christ this Advent, to invite him into our hearts that we may experience his peace and joy, we have to be aware of the thieves that could rob us the thieves are not necessarily people who could guide us astray. They could be the forces and influence of a godless culture that leads us to drunkenness, debauchery, and fornication. It could also be advertising that fools us into believing we cannot be happy this Christmas unless we acquire some things we cannot afford, <coughs> like a new Mercedes 
a new Lexus, a new high-end sports car. Anything that encourages us to put ourselves before others, especially the poor and the weak, will rob us of what God calls us to be. Loving, caring, and compassionate. As Christians, we firmly believe that people are more precious than things. God is love and participation. Love is participation in the life of God. Therefore, every loving relationship is a participation in the life of God. And that is why people are more important than things. Yes, I think we ought to focus more on family reconciliation, spiritual healing, and unity than on the acquisition of things. We also need to be alert because Jesus will also come, gently knocking at our hearts. We do not wish to miss this opportunity of a lifetime. Let us be alert and wait for Jesus who will come to us.